Everybody, get to the crypt, because it's time once again for the Mythwits. The show where we never die, regardless of how much you pray to the old gods or the new. We do, however, pray to all things geek pop culture, drenched in absurdity, and coated with sarcasm. Which was raised from an army of undead. Each week, we bring on industry guests to talk about the ever-expanding Geekiverse. We do our damnedest to be funny, but there are no guarantees. I'm your host, Michael Kafis, and joining me this evening is my co-host, Jonathan J. Reinhardt, because, Jonathan, as I'm trying to find the right mouse to get your face, there's your face, say hi. Uh, hi. This is Jonathan Reinhardt, not Peter Blix Bryant, because Peter is somewhere in between wherever he's going. He most likely is either in the air or has just landed and is fussing with his baggage. Sitting uh, next to this only person. Yes. So I tried to get Adrian Benson of um, the um, Wargaming Recon because I'm a big fan of the show. Uh, and I thought, you know, why, who, who better to talk about Game of Thrones? But um, evidently, uh, I couldn't get him. So Jonathan agreed to uh, <clears throat> fill, fill Adrian's shoes. He, he has some big shoes, doesn't he? He does. He has very big shoes. You know <laughs> so, what they say. I, well, at least he doesn't have to pay extra for them. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that. Looks like Peter looks like Peter's in the room. So maybe he landed already. So welcome everybody. Ooh. Uh it's the Dimwits. Paul. <laughs> All right. So uh I I <clears throat> J Jonathan, I made That's you me. read I made you write a bio, so I'm gonna read it for you. How about that, buddy? Can I do that for That's you? Good. I, All right. I don't really want to read my own bio. Let's, let's, let's do it. Jonathan J. Reinhardt is the true king of the North. His wargaming recon Army defends the wall against all wildlings and other mythical and not-so-mythical creatures. You can find him at wargamingrecon.com. Now, Jonathan, please do me a favor and tell me a little bit about what Wargaming Recon is. So Wargaming Recon is the longest-running tabletop wargaming podcast, period. Although Adrian would like to say in existence or in the universe... But we don't know. Maybe aliens have their own podcast that they've been doing for, like, as long as there's been A Song of Ice and Fire. So it's hard to say if that's true. But we talk about all sorts of kind of stuff. We have industry guests on, like you guys do, and we cover conventions, and you name it, we do it. We do a lot of video work now, audio podcasts. We've got a great group of people involved, a lot of people who like to listen and tune in, and we just have a really good time. Awesome. All right, cool. Uh, who, who was your latest guest? So we actually have an episode coming out next week with Trevor Atridge of Breach Storm Entertainment. He has a Kickstarter launching tomorrow, which is April 30th, 2019 at 9 a.m. for his sci-fi game. It's a skirmish level game where what I love about it, you are somewhere in the distant future. There's humanity, there's like these lion type creatures and stuff, but you're all commandos. So it's all skirmish warfare where commandos are like trying to beat the crap out of each other and do just really cool like special ops kind of stuff. Great line of miniatures, great terrain, and um, he demos all over the place. He was demoing at TotalCon, I guess, this year, too. So you guys may have seen him. Oh, cool. All yeah. right. I don't recall, but I don't recall a lot of things. Uh, so um, before we get started to, on tonight's topic, uh, I'm going to have to give everyone a big old spoiler. And I'm going to have to apologize right off the bat because, like, you know, the three listeners we have, if you haven't already seen uh, Game of Thrones, the, the recent episode, uh, we're going to spoil the hell out of it. Uh, but I don't think you should leave because Jonathan has a really good idea that sometimes it's good to spoil things. It's good to... Uh, be spoiled and, and you can enjoy it all the better. Uh, right, Jonathan? <laughs> I do. How else do you get blue cheese? Oh, that's that's true. That is... People love wow. some blue cheese. That's right. So so allow us to turn Game of Thrones, if you haven't seen it, into a delectable blue cheese uh, dressing for you. Uh, Paul, you're staying. Too, too bad. You're not allowed to leave. Um, let's see... Oh, Peter! Oh, actually, wanted or not. And and Pete, actually, we we see him. He is in um, the room. He is at Jack in a Box, and he's not happy about it. Uh, grabbing a quick bite to eat. So um, 
Well, hey, at least you have good entertainment. Someone better start winding that thing up and let them out the box. Right? Um, all right. So uh, here's, here's how we're going to do this tonight. Um, because Pete and I talked about this. We're going to do, uh, after the last episode uh, finale of Game of Thrones, we're going to have another um, episode where he and I are going to do a whole deep dive on the entire series kind of a thing and talk about um, our favorite types of things. So um, we're going to focus on two things tonight. Um, Jonathan and I are going to talk about the brief history of time in um, the Game of Thrones universe. And we're talking about from the get-go, even to where they're talking about having the prequel start. So we're just going to just talk a little bit briefly and bring everyone up to up to speed to where we actually started the series. Um, we're not going to do the deep dive into actually like what happens through the, the, the series because, I don't know, um, <clears throat> you should have and or could be or should be watching it. Um, and then you can find that out. Uh, but we are going to, after talking about that, talk about what in the actual fuck happened last night. Um, so uh, if you really haven't seen last night's, then oh, maybe you want to stop for the first, you know, for just, just ditch out. Or just, you know what? Turn the audio down. Turn your audio down and don't um, don't listen. You'll just see us going, blah, 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 being stupid and talking, and then I'll, I'll wave at you when it's time for the game. And uh, see if I do this. It'll be time for the game, and then you can turn the, turn the volume up, because we really need listeners. Please, please, please. Well, not listeners, watchers. <laughs> um, so what and, you you're, well, you're an ASL interpreter, right? So why don't you am. start signing away? Uh, sign incorrectly and give them the wrong stuff that we're not talking about, and just start going and see what happens. Okay, uh, so kind of, I'll just do something like this, right? Like, was that <laughs> the guy, like the guy in, in Africa did? Is it? Yeah. All right. Oh, man, way to ruin a funeral. Yeah, thanks. Way to go, bro. Okay, um, so let's start. Let let is let's us get right into this uh, brief history, uh, which we are down further <laughs> on the dock for history because you know that comes first. Uh, so when the mummy dragon and the daddy dragon love each other very, very much. Right. So, well, actually, the um, the first age, the first time that would be, I guess, considered part of the history of Game of Thrones would be called the Dawn Age, and that is... Oh, and let me preface this, guys. Um, for uh, purposes of how they keep track of time, there's there's a delineator, much like we do in ours with B.C., before Christ, and A.D., or something like that, right? What does that mean, Jonathan? Anno Domini, was that after he died. Okay. All right. After he died. Okay, that's good. Yeah. Um, but... Uh, B.C. means before the conquering, means which means before the Targaryens did the conquering. Uh, so we're going to lead you up to B.C. You spoiler warning again. Now they know the Targaryens and something was conquered. I, we, already, we already prefaced this whole thing. It's but in the show. We're going to start now spoiling stuff. You're just like, well, we're going to spoil. Are you a, are, are you a spoiled Nazi? <laughs> <laughs> well, that, then that is the rest of your duty. Any time a spoil... No. <laughs> you're, 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 that's your job. You're the spoiler, right. spoiler, um, someone has to make the cheese. I'm just saying. <laughs> All right. So the dawn age, uh, what happens in th this is 12,000 years before the conquering. Okay. So what, what's happening 12,000 years ago, Jonathan? Well, you would think back then there wouldn't be a whole lot to happen, right? Cause who's around and you would be wrong. So the first men happened to exist in Westeros at that time, and they were kind of like you would think of our actual history when you go back to the Paleolithic Age and deal with all sorts of Neanderthals and things like that. But also there were the children of the forest, who, as anyone who's seen the show knows, that they have these kind of cool, like, tree-looking people. They're very one with nature, and they felt threatened by the first men. Because they're like, these people, they don't know what's going on. Like, we're one with nature, like an elf, and they need to protect themselves. So they decided to create the ultimate weapon, or what they thought was the ultimate weapon, which was the first Night Walker, the White Walker, as we know, the Night King. And they did that way, way back, and they were like, yes, this is the best thing ever. And they felt pretty good with themselves. For a time. So did dragons exist back then? So dragons are one of those wonderful creatures where... There's not 
many of them. And they haven't always been many of them, but they pop up here and there. And at that time, the children of the forest weren't too worried about that kind of stuff. So, but, so the reason I say that is the whole story goes that they shove dragon glass into the Night King's, or a, you know, he right into just his a, chest. Right. So, Dra- and, well, do you know create. what dragon glass actually is? It, it's pretty interesting how it's created and what it is. I, I was assuming that it was just something uh, similar to just when heat, when dragons would blow up the sand or something. I don't know. No, you're not far off. So dragon glass is obsidian, just a type of rock okay, that nice. is formed uh, when it comes into uh, contact with a volcanic eruption or lava, or, uh, that kind of extreme geological forces. Okay. It's so obviously it's not going to happen forces. everywhere. Well, the same yeah. geological forces. There you um, go. <laughs> so the, uh, the reason is, I'm thinking, first of all, why... Well, all right, first of all, you have a point. Uh, the children of the forest, they're the Indians, and the white man is always the white man. I did man. not say they're the Indians because we respect people of all cultures and backgrounds here at the Mythwits. American, uh, North indigenous, Ameri- peoples, indigenous peoples, peoples of them. North America who were, <laughs> mistaken, who were mistaken for East Indians because Christopher Columbus and his gaggle of idiots were ignorant. How's that? As the unenlightened say, with the feather, not the dot. Uh, and you know what? I want to point out something real quick. You are mm-hmm. so politically correct when when you're on the camera here, okay? But when you're in that goddamn chat room, Jonathan, you let it fly. <clears throat> that said. Uh... Just because Ant-Man <laughs> is terrible and he likes to get a little too familiar with a certain equestrian mongrel, I don't know what you mean. I don't know what you mean so uh yeah which is a good time for us to move on to the age of heroes and the long night and uh, that's an n-i-g-h-t not uh a knight as in sir davos um so uh this now we we were at 12 dawn, dawn of age would be the children of the forest creating um uh the White Walkers, or the, the Night King, as it were. Uh, and then now we have the Age of Heroes. That's 10,000 to 6,000 as we're going backwards to 6,000 B.C. before the conquering. That's 4,000 years. And what's going on 4,000 years ago? So this is the point in time where show watchers will be familiar with some stories told by Old Nan. She likes to tell these stories, and they get recounted by Bran and some of the Stark children. And she's talking about people like, I don't know, Bran the Builder, for example, who did wonderful things, uh, is theorized to have built Winterfell. Winterfell and all these castles in Westeros are really, really old. The uh, technology to build them doesn't exist anymore because Westeros is kind of in a uh, real world version of the medieval ages, the dark ages, as it was called, the middle ages. Oh, so you mean the like technology... the, the 21st century? What do you no, just... <laughs> Where like, we have touch screens, but like we have to touch the screen. What is wrong with us? Ugh. Forget that, throw it in the trash. Um, so it's almost kind of like the ancient Romans built all these wonderful things and the people were like, we don't know how to build with stone. What is that? Concrete? Mm. Huh? We're just going to take these rocks we found in the field and put some twigs together. And so it's kind of like that eventually, but the age of heroes is like the Roman empire where you have this great technology happening, these strong people who've done heroic things and age of heroes. And they really have kind of set the foundation for Westeros as we know it. So when you look at a lot of the major houses, things like the Starks, the Lannisters, their forebearers come from this time. But also of this time happens to be when winter came. And not just any winter, but a winter unlike any other in their history. It lasted so long, was so cold and so terrible, it was known as the Long Night. That sounds cold. Uh, and it's, it's, uh, they're still building and the, the, the man, man is basically building up their civilization, um, into then what we get into the Andal invasion. And we hear them say, all the time, King of the Andals, that's, that's basically saying King of men, right? Isn't that? Yeah, basically. Again, I think for a lot of people, you kind of have to go to a real world comparison. So if you look at like when the Age of Andals, you're talking about things like the Norman Conquest, you're talking about 
when the Ingles and the Saxons, even before that, were involved, and when like the Danes were coming into the United Kingdom, what became the United Kingdom, the British Isles. So you, you're looking at the people who lived there, uh, not being able to cope really with these newcomers and having to realize that, well, wait, maybe things are gonna change around here. So with the Andals, you actually see a lot of change coming and in particular religious change. So when the Andals came, they were followers of a faith called the Faith of the Seven. And one of the things that they believed was that all this hocus pocus about the old gods, about the children of the forest, about white walkers, that was just stories you gave to your kids to keep them in bed at night. That they didn't exist because no one had seen a white walker. No one had seen one of these children of the forest in a very, very, very long time. No one knew why the wall was built. They knew that it was there, that Bran, the builder, and the Age of Heroes built it. They knew it was there. They knew it was imposing. But no, people are just like, it's a wall. We don't know what's on the other side. We don't know why it's there, but it's there. And so you're so, talking... Well, I was just going to say, like, the Andals were like, this is all just gibberish. Right. You're just like crazy people in the streets. And so they really wanted people to follow the way of the Faith of the Seven. And they happened to come across some of these children of the forest and they kind of went on a crusade almost to wipe them out as heretics as i guess we would think of them as like witches as just like crazy people and to try to do away with that threat so that people would realize the one true faith was the faith of the seven so kind of like middle america is what you're saying that's um uh... sure if you want to label things like that <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. All right. Like so, all and, and moving on, moving on. Sizes. Moving on, moving on. Uh, so in, in that, during this, in the Andal invasion, um, which was 6,000 to 4,000, 2,000 years, and then we move into, again, the Doom of Valyria, which is um, uh, one th – well, first let's talk – the, the, you would do it. We covered the Andal invasion. Um, so that was sort of the faith of the seven. So the number seven – actually does have a lot of significance within the whole series, correct? It does. And I think whenever you look at any real or fictional society, you'll see that certain numbers pop up a lot mm -hmm. uh, for various degrees of importance. And seven happens to be one of them. If you refer back to Judeo-Christian uh, sort of origins, you see seven shows up a lot in a variety of things. And of course, it's very meaningful in Game of, the world of Game of Thrones as well, A Song of Ice and Fire, Westeros and Easteros. Cool. All right, all right. And then we get into like the downfall or the doom of Valyria. Um, give us a little backstory of Valyria because that was 100 BC, um, which in, in the history it sort of happened, it sounds like instantaneously because it wasn't like a, a too much time going by. So what happened? So Valyria was very, very sad because their best friends, no, that's not what it is at all. <laughs> um, so they had a, a natural disaster actually that happened. Volcanoes, we come back to the volcanoes again, right? Volcanoes erupted. And Valeria was a wonderful place where the people were relatively prosperous. They had a very organized and civilized society. They also had dragons. And Valeria will mean something to people who watch a show for a couple of reasons. One, you know, you don't go where Valeria was unless you want to get a certain affliction that turns your flesh to stone, and also as being an origin for the Targaryens. And it's interesting, when Valeria went poof into a lot of smoke and ash and so forth, the Targaryens were the only house, the only nobles really, the only people left there who had dragons left. And so they were able to use the fact that they were survivors to then take all of this uh, with them, all their resources and everything, and then kind of move to what we call Dragonstone. And they use that as their fortress, as their place to kind of recuperate, to reassess what was going on, and to further strengthen themselves and build themselves up so that they could see what was going on in the world. And make a lot of dragon glass, by the way. Well, what else are you going to do with a lot of volcano stuff? That's that true. magma just going to ooze around them. You can only get so much <laughs> netherstone to go in um, Minecraft, you know. That's true. All right, so the War of Conquest, that happens uh, 2 BC to 1 AC. So basically the War of Conquest was the 
um, I guess, the conquest itself. So uh, what happens? So this is where we actually start getting into things that more directly or recent-ish memory of some characters from the show. Oh, and, 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 and let me let me just tell me real quick. We do have to pick it up because we have spent way too much time just on the first five <laughs> um, instances of stuff. So um, not that you're doing a bad, a bad job. We're going to – I'm just – being I never do time. a bad job because I'm a pro. You are you I'm are a consummate a pro. There you go. Yeah, I'm just really good. So the Targaryens decided, hey, you know, we're just kind of sick and tired of being here at Dragonstone. We got this whole other island nation that we can go to. And they decided to invade Westeros. So you see Aegon Targaryen. You get that name, Aegon, uh, that showed up a lot in the Game of Thrones TV series. Him and his sister wives use their dragons. They go to Westeros, they subjugate the entire land, they get the Lannisters to bend the knee, they get the Starks to bend the knee, but then the Dornish people, they start just being like, no, we're not going to put up with this, and they go to the Neil Commando Ninja style, and they force the Targaryens into this agreement where the Dorn people say, okay, we're going to form peace, we'll recognize you, we'll say what's going on, we're not going to fight anymore, and the Targaryens are like, okay, that's cool, and you get to control your own uh, lands down there. So you kind of get this mutual non-aggression pact peace kind of thing going on. Peace in our time. Uh, okay, so that was basically the conquest where basically then now we get seven kingdoms that the Targaryens were able to conquer, and then basically Esteros was it were able to sort of stay out of that reign, correct? Yeah, so they were kind of doing their own thing, and that's where you get things like Slaver's Bay that happens later on mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff. Um, but... Now the attention really is focused on Westeros and not so much on the main continent or any of that kind of stuff. And don't you think it's crazy that they call that those the free lands because they were free from the reign of of the Targaryens and of the the conquest. However, they became enslavers. So how free is it? Well, with enough money, anything can be free. Oh, blah blah blah. Okay, so uh, now we move into uh, the Dance of Dragons. Uh, which is 129, and now this, people, is what I want you to understand. The War Conquest was three years. Uh, bam, bam, wham, bam, um, have a dragon, ma'am. Uh, and then uh, the Dance of Dragons was 129 AC, moving up into the timeline, to 131. Two years. And uh, I'm just going to take this one real quick, that we got the Targaryens have a civil war after King Viserys, uh, the first leaves the kingdom to his daughter. Um, what is her name? How do you pronounce it? Ray Rayana, Ray Rhaenyra. Rhaenyra. What is her name? That sounds good to me. Okay. Good. 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 Um, and this is sort of where we've we learn a lot, and we it gets repeated a lot. Um, so I'm actually from uh, from what we only know as um, you and I. Um, Jonathan is numbers seven through nine. Uh, I'm going to let you take that right away. Just take them straight away. Run, run through them. Sure. So after you have this civil war kind of going on with the Targaryens, you get the who becomes the Mad King, consolidating and ruling the Seven Kingdoms. Anyone who doesn't agree with him, he uses any measures possible from wildfire on down. His son Rhaegar gets wed to one of the Dornish people, Elia Martell. And unfortunately, he, he has a wandering eye. Decides, though he has a wife, he really much prefers and is in love with one of the Starks, Lyanna Stark. Mm -hmm. And this then leads into Robert's rebellion because Robert Baratheon says, "Well, wait a sec. I'm the one who really loves Lyanna, and this Rhaegar abducts her. What's going on there?" When in reality, we learn that's not the case. That they were in love. They went off together to get married in secret and so forth. But Robert thinks, wait, I'm going to use this. I can't be jilted. And he rebels against the king and the rightful peoples. He gets a lot of houses to join him. They go like crazy all the way. It lasts about a year where he ultimately wins the war, slays Rhaegar. Jamie Lannister, the king slayer, gets his name by killing the Mad King because the Mad King was going to use that wildfire again. But this time on the innocent peoples, are not so innocent as the kids may be, but the people of King's Landing. And so he wants to save the common people, the, the little folk, the small folk, by doing that. Uh, and then Robert becomes king. 
he has a relatively peaceful reign as king. He's married to Cersei Lannister. And generally, now that the fighting's done, he's more interested in whoring and eating than actually ruling. And it ends up happening to be that he needs a new hand because his original hand, John Aaron, is dead. So he asks his buddy, Ned Stark, to become Hand of the King. And you see that as we are in the first season of Game of Thrones, that takes place. And ultimately, we get a couple big plot twists at the end of the first season going into season two, where Ned Stark is killed. Oh, spoiler alert! Spoiler! And then Robert dies as well through being engineered to his demise by Cersei. And then we end up in another war for who will be the rightful king of the Seven Kingdoms. And that sets off several seasons of the show. All right. So, and that's basically, now, the show, uh, Robert's reign was uh, 16 years, um, and that would give them enough time to have, uh, what's his face, Joff, Joff, Joffrey turn, you know, of age to be about, you know, as old as he needed to be, um, to be an, an asshole. Um, <clears throat> so, but, but then Game of Thrones proper, um, which happens in, in up until the current year of now, 305 AC, from 298 AC. So it is the year 305 or so in the year our one of the lords of some old or new god, um, <laughs> depending, depending upon who you are. Um, so uh, that is your briefest of uh, <clears throat> brief histories of the... Um, you know that that's uh, that's Westeros and Ester Easteros, Southeros, the West. Uh, where where is there? Are we missing one? Northeros. <laughs> um, that's one hundred and one. Um, you all graduate and you get your diploma. Um, so moving on though, uh, we are now going to uh, and uh, Jonathan. Um, I'm going to need you. Meat and potatoes. To- give you the spoiler alert alert which i don't know what that is but evidently you're the you're the master of arms for the spoiler alert so spoiler, spoiler, spoiler. there there you We're go we talking about episode three or i yes. believe it's called episode 79 no 70 i think it is because the previous one was episode 69 that's uh, that, of game yeah. of thrones that's where my girl got laid. Anyway, um, but now, now it's war. It is war time. Shit hits the fan. The fan starts a whipping like nobody's business. And um, it, uh, well, what, uh, I, I asked you to give, like, actually, in one word, Jonathan, what would you say? What would your, what would your one word be to describe just the show last night, first of all? Dark. Yeah. You wanted one word. Yeah, I, I I don't know if I can pick something better. Dark, just doom. Uh there there was so like they 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 wanted you to have um a little bit of hope, right? So, you know, um what is her name? The Mor Morisella or no, the, the, the Red Queen, the Red Witch, whatever her name is. Oh yeah, the Mel- Red Woman. Melisandre. Melisandre. She comes in and she uh, right before the Dothraki all go across the field, she lights up their swords. You're like, oh, shit, shit just got real, right? You're like, oh, yeah. And then they run across the field, and all of a sudden, all those flaming swords just start just going out. And honestly, I don't know about you, but the first thing I thought is, oh, that's a lot of Dothraki in the, of the army, and they're dead now. That's, that's all I thought, right? Like... Um, and and you, uh, all right. I'm gonna let you make your uh, crypt comment. It's not like you invented it, but go ahead. The, the, it has to be said right now. Go ahead. Okay, so the crypt obviously is a good place to hide because it's safe and secure. But at the same point, there's dead people there. They're fighting dead people. Right. Dead people who raise dead people from the dead to fight. No one thought maybe we should arm everyone down there, yeah. or like I don't know, burn the bodies or something. Yeah. That would that that'd be a safe place, a crypt, a crypt full of dead bodies. Um, so yeah, that was just really. Bad I'll just move. let the skeleton hug me and keep me nice and cozy. <laughs> oh, but wait, now it's strangling me. Shocking! I mean, come on. 
I will say though that the, the I like to call it the charge of light brigade, but the Dothraki charge that was beautifully shot right there, where the going and it fades out, so mm-hmm. you see that they're just up there, uh, and you have the Mad Queen and you have Jon Snow up there watching, and just like you said, everything just slowly cut, starts winking out. Now, what I don't know is if all the Dothraki are dead or not, and we also don't know if Ghost makes it or not because Ghost runs off with them, but we don't see him come back. Hmm. That's that's a good question. He's definitely he's on our missing in action list. Um, we're we're gonna go over hopefully um, before the end. We'll get it to who who lives, who dies, and then we'll get into who we think is gonna live or die in the next couple of episodes. Um, so uh, one of the things because you mentioned the Dothraki, do they live or die? Imagine. You know, you bring these people from another land. You bring you you gain their trust, their admiration. They're 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 willing to die for you, obviously, and you send them across the field. And literally, I mean, whether one or two Dothraki survive, you know, uh, the herd was culled. Okay, um, and well, you know what, Jonathan? There's got to be Dothraki left because there's Dothraki still back in the grasslands. Not every single Dothraki came with her, so. No, but, that's true, but they don't all recognize her as being Khaleesi and being no, the one to you, rule. You, you asked, are there any Dothraki still alive? So that's my true. answer, I did my, answer to, Westeros. my answer to that question is yes. Um, but imagine D- Daenerys. I mean, like you know her, her you know, with everything else going on, she just lost like her first loyal people. That's that sucks. <laughs> it's it's not easy to take, but if you think about it. It's much easier than when she lost one of her dragons, which was really one of her sons, and taken over and turned to the evil side at the end of the previous season, and still kind of reeling from that, and just also with the previous episode dealing with the fact that she's not really the rightful heir to the throne. Yep. (laughs) Paul said that Dothraki are extinct. Uh... (laughs) Oh, uh, listen, I want to say hi to a new fan, um, Annette. Hi, Annette. Uh, welcome. And because uh, she said, and this is just because, you know, um, she, I'm on Team Aria as well, but she said Aria and the library scene was amazing. We're gonna, Yeah, I, I want to make sure we get to that. Maybe we should just talk about it right now. But, I mean, uh, I, the only thing I, I, I wanted to see was her somehow rip a face off of one of the dead and slap it on so she could just sort of, like, pull a, a walking dead dead like hold on i'm just gonna slip out of here <laughs> well do you know there were a lot of rumors actually that um she was gonna do something that happened at the end of the episode but she was gonna do it by actually doing the whole faceless man thing and using one of the undead to just kind of get close to what happens uh, at the end which we're not talking about yet but we will and yeah. it turns out that's not what it was but i gotta say that was some great stealthing that she did i really built the suspense it was beautifully shot great actress and she was wonderful in it. You really felt like something was going to happen. I had a lot of jump scares at that point. Yeah, yeah. I was. I mean, all right. First of all, let me explain something, Jonathan. Uh, my TV, you know, it's, it's, I mean, you can see back in back of me. There's a couch back there, and obviously, though, it doesn't do the exact spatial justice. But I literally got in front of my seat here. I'm sitting as close as I am right now. So we literally, I had the TV right in front of me. And I'm just like, because I could not see what was going on. It was all dark anyway. And I'm just like, holy shit, holy shit. So uh, uh, it was just crazy. Um, but Arya did an amazing job. Um, she, I mean, Bravos just did her a work. You know, she did so well in Bravos. <laughs> She really did. I mean, she, that was her, I guess, becoming a person, you know, she's like a, a real, um, that was her college education, I guess you could say, you know, well, yeah, for life. That, she was just a little kid who, yeah. she wanted to be one of the, the guys, right? She wanted to be a knight or whatever that meant to her. And, but being told she's a lady, she can't, and just not really knowing her place in the world. And then she went there and I think those were some of the most boring episodes of the entire series. I just kind of yawned through a lot of them. But you got payback um, right now, and so they're not afraid to play the long game on this show. No, no, they're definitely not. Um, so this episode was built on, I would say, three acts, and the first act, which you know was the pre-battle, I think that deserves its own sort of discussion about how just palpable the the tension um, was, and then of course, a kind of. Uh, 
that act ending, like we said, with the Dothraki sort of just being snuffed. Um, and, and then just, it was just nothing but dread. You know, it was just like literally they, 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 it was hope that, you know, you're like, why are you doing this to me? I, this is not good. Oh, but, oh, it's so good. You know, Melisandre lit the, she lit the trench finally. And why am I finding myself fruiting for her? I hate her. Why Why was I glad that she didn't die right at the end and she got the trench lit and all that stuff? But uh, I guess she had her little redemption arc, obviously. Um, <clears throat> but, yeah, it's just it's, it was nothing but inching, the inch, the inching further into the, the doom or the crypt of dread, <laughs> as it were. Uh, what what else did you like? Let's we're talking about into the second act of this where you know there's a lot of fighting, the dragons are going on. What you know, uh, take take the floor. What do you what do you want to well, comment? Well, on? I think they had some really great pacing. So like in the beginning, mm-hmm. like you said, they really built up the suspense. They showed the authenticity of what people would feel and how they would react, knowing that there's this great unknown foe. Because for most of them, they've never seen. Uh, a white walker or one of these you know zombie type things and just like trying to figure out what's going to happen because in the previous episode they don't really tell you much they're just like we're going to do this thing and they don't talk battle plans or whatever but you actually see it in action and then it flows so well into the actual combat where out of nowhere you think oh the white walkers are coming they're going to come and get them and then it's a red woman and so you get this surge of hope happening as everything goes into play but what i think was really quite amazing uh, that stood out a lot for me was the dragon fight scene because mm. we had to know it was coming, right? That there was going to be some sort of combat involved with the dragons. You didn't know if the Night King was there or not because they purposely ex- um, avoided him, right? In the previous mm. episode. So there's a lot of berries going around that maybe he was going straight to King's Landing. And even if that was true, you still going to have Daenerys and Jon Snow with their two dragons trying to tackle the army of the dead or undead, as I should say. And just the fact of how they did it and what they were able to accomplish was really quite interesting. But I do have one complaint there. So you talked about lighting the trench. And Daenerys is all flying around and doing her own thing and running into Jon Snow and a dragon, which I thought was pretty funny. (laughs) Um, But for the life of me, I can't figure out why they felt it was a good idea to be riding on the dragons and blowing up basically the back ranks of all those undead instead of lighting the trench. Uh, the the signal, they were supposed to at least be able to be close enough to see the signal. One of them should have been because that's when um, Sir Davos was trying to like, you know, light the trench! And it's like they couldn't see him, um, so they had to make alternative plans. Um, but yeah, they kind of went from the script a little bit. But again, the Night King sort of thwarted their plans because he... he made visibility for crap too so that's true and i think it kind of goes back to the previous episode again where they made mention of the fact that the dragons didn't like the cold and i'm not one who's read all the books but for anyone who's really into the lore you know that when the conquest was happening uh that shortly after when the dragons went north and they went to the wall they couldn't go over it because it was too cold somehow the cold was affecting the dragons that being warm weather beasts and just so in tune with fire and so forth that they might have some things going on in it and you needed it right because think of them as this way they are the ultimate weapon they are a nuclear weapon going on and if Mm. you have something that can just thanos the crap out of things you need something to anti-snap it Mm -hmm. and that anti-snap had to be this cold and and martin's actually gone on record as saying the white walkers are his in-world version of climate change and Hmm. climate change as scientists tell us, although things might be getting warmer or whatever, uh, that the real problem is you're going to get this intense snow and ice and all that kind of stuff. And hence, you get the White Walker, you get the snow, you get how it impacts everything, and it's getting further south. And I just think it all came together really well. It played out very well. And it really led right into that third act. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, I got you. I like that. Michael Thompson said that the siege reminded him of World War Z, which I thought uh, that's that was uh, pretty chronolent. Yes, that's very good. Agreed, yes. Yeah. Um, all right, so I am going to – I have a list. I, I, I literally took some notes on the fly, Jonathan, as I was watching. Uh, it's about like uh, maybe less than 20 things. I'm going to read them off um, uh, rapid fire. 
um, stop me if you absolutely have to, okay? Um, but I'm going to say that, uh, well, no, actually, some of them I already mentioned. So, um, yeah, it was, like, interesting because until the second wave, you didn't even see how many that there were, um, which then, again, was like, oh, my God. Like, like, oh, that's not the ground? Oh, the whole area is all undead. Oh, great. Uh, for the... First time I was actually pulling for the Red Witch, I did mention that. I totally didn't have a good feeling about the prospect of them pulling a W out. Like, uh, at some point um, further into the battle, even as Jon Snow was trying to fight his way in, you know, near the end, I was like, I think we're supposed to lose. I think we. I think this is going to be like uh, an Infinity War ending. You know, that's kind of how I was feeling. So I was actually a little shocked at the ending. Um, Brianna fighting for Jamie was really kind of awesome. You know what I mean? Um, as well as the other dude fighting for Clegane, and um, you know, Clegane sort of coming around right near the end too was kind of cool. Uh, I just felt so bad. I <laughs> my notes said poor Clegane hashtag fire. Um, <laughs> It was just, again, just in general, Arya kicking ass was amazing. Like, she just, um, most, I think, one of the most developed characters. And no, anyone out there, don't even, you know, say um, that, you know, I have anything for Arya. I don't. It's just, I, I, I just, my favorite character by far. Um, the, uh, what is her name? Late, Leana? Lady Leana um, ki killing woman? the giant. Yeah. Oh, man, I cried. When, but but oh, it's like she killed the giant. She she went out exactly like she wanted, and everyone thought she deserved. So that was awesome. Um, let's see. Oh, and when I was talking earlier about thinking that the the pre battle was palpable, but then when Arya was in the library, like um, Annette was saying, I thought, oh wow, <laughs> that's even more palpable. I can't even breathe. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, of course, of, you know, like we all knew the crypt. Keep, it was like it was like almost like get to the crypt already. And as soon as he wait, raised his arms, you know, in the field, the um, the Night King, it was like, oh, uh, shit's just about to get real. How did anyone not see this coming? Honestly, just like people wear a cyanide caplet in there. Everyone on that field when they died should have somehow had a way to be combustible. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know that's like a uh, an, an impossibility, but uh, that should have happened. Um, let's see. Yeah, I don't. I think that's it. What? Uh, which dragon is left? That was one question I, I got left with. So I think they actually have two left, and I don't remember their names because the Targaryens use a lot of really similar names for things, yeah, and they're all named it, after one another. Um, but you actually see. Daenerys' dragon there kind of like huddled around her. And Jon Snow's dragon is not shown as dead. And that's one thing that I've learned with um, Game of Thrones. Unless you yeah. see someone die on screen, they're not dead. All right. Uh, I, I, I thought that one of them, I thought that they had killed the Night King's dragon, but then he had turned one of their dragons. If Maybe I'm wrong. No, uh, so, well, during the dragon fight, uh, one of the dragons took a big bite out of it, uh, but it was still there uh, at the end until it had something happen to it <laughs> at the very end. Uh, mm. But no, it was still there. It was breathing ice fire. I don't know what you call that. Uh, <laughs> that magical blue flame blue fire. stuff. Yeah, blue fire. Dragon, <laughs> blue dragon, night fire. I don't know. <laughs> um, so uh, what do you got? What do you got? What do you, uh, we have a... A little more, a few more minutes before we need to switch gears for the game. So, let's talk about the last act and sort of what uh, what went down. Well, I think you you mentioned character arcs. I think for the characters that died, mostly you saw them fulfill their arcs, right? So, you get things like Theon dying, and he gets his whole redemption. You mentioned redemption earlier. He's there, and Bran basically tells him, you know, everything you've done brought you here and like you're a good man Theon and he's recognizing the fact that although Theon's really of the Iron Islands actually you got to put that aside he's a Stark I don't care what anyone says he's a Stark he's once again a Stark he atoned for everything he had done before that was wrong and some people might say that he kind of atoned for it uh, when he was reek and he helped um, some changes happen at Winterfell beforehand but like he really did it this time so you get that going that's epic he's there it's just him and the Night King kind of strides up at everyone parts and Night King's basically like, come on, bro. 
and he just charges and he knows he's not going to make it, but he's trying to do whatever he can to save Bran because Bran's his little brother. Right. And, and I want to, I let me, beautiful. I, I want to step in for one sec. Cause I want to, I just was watching the beginning of season four when, um, the, whatever the uh, Bolton best or whatever his name is. Um, oh God, I hated him. Yeah. He, when, when he captures him now, I didn't realize this the first time, but he, uh, Theon, and this changed everything for me, Theon um, really pronounced his regret while while he was being led on that farce escape and being led back. Right before they went in, he's like, you know, he basically said he made the biggest mistake of his life. He chose wrong. If he could go back and do it, he would do it differently. He fucked up, basically. You know what I mean? And any normal person would have been like, oh. You chose wisely. Yeah, I mean, like you chose wisely, meaning like you. This was your, you uh, you confessed in an unknowing way. But that bastard just still, you know, he got, um, you know, he got his punishment way overboard. But um, yeah, everything you said though still holds up as far as the way he, um, till the end died, um, for for um, Bran, and he deserved he deserved to be spoken in a true as a true hero i think so yeah yeah he was quite something uh i do have a couple problems with the episode uh that you kind of see clear to the end um i don't think enough people died first of all and that's kind of an odd thing to say but we know for a fact that of the characters that people tend to care about you're talking about things like Jon snow you even see him charlie to a lesser degree brian or pod maybe for some people um, Tyrion and so forth, they're all alive, they've all managed to make it through, and there's only three episodes left, so how can each of them have some sort of completion to their character arc, some sort of meaningful contribution in the amount of time that's left? And unless they just do a big purge or something, I don't know how they do that. Uh, I think this was a chance to really kind of allow them to shine and go out. Uh, and there's a lot of theories again that Brienne was going to go, because like her arc has been fulfilled, basically. She, she's a knight, she had that yeah. moment with Jamie. It was really mm-hmm. touching. I could, I could have seen her dying trying to save Jamie. Maybe uh, that didn't happen. I thought uh, I did. I thought I did see her, see her die, but I was wrong. She's alive. Yeah, yeah. It, unlike Walking Dead, being bitten by one of these zombies doesn't turn you into a zombie. You're gonna die. And, and she didn't. She's alive. <laughs> you're uh, you're then, absolutely right. <laughs> right. And and then Bran. So I, I know he was like, I'm gonna warg into these crows or whatever the hell they were. But he just sat there like a little bitch, right? Wait. So he, he did the thing, he's in those ravens, and then you see the dragon fight, and he's just like, I'm going to sit here and warg into these ravens. You don't see anything else that happened. He's just sitting there, he's waiting, and then he's like, oh, hey, by the way, everything you did brought you here, Theon. You're a good man. And he's just like, I'm just going to chill and wait. No one could have given him dragon glass. He couldn't have been, I don't know, like, warg into a tree or, or somehow affect change. He just, I know he's in a wheelchair, but he just sat there, dude. <laughs> First like of all, do something. All right, all right, all right. Time out, time out. Stop. Calm down. Calm down. Easy, boy. Easy. Take a drink. Easy. All right, let me get it. Michael Thompson said the same thing. I wanted to point that out first of all. But, yes, you got to it, too, uh, that you said he was totally useless with the murder crows. Um, and, yes, you think he achieved nothing. I disagree. Uh, how can you sit there and say, oh, on Game of Thrones, you know, if you don't see it, it didn't, ha- you know, it, it may not have happened or whatever. I mean, he he had to do what he did. We're going to find out why, uh, and it's going to be interesting. At least that's my one prediction is that, oh my God, I hope I'm right, is that <laughs> whatever he did was not useless because I will I will eat crow <laughs> if um, if that's not right, or at least raven. I'll eat raven. Um but I do live in Baltimore, so that's okay. I like Purple Raven. That sounds a little that was awful. freaky. Anyway. Um, it's so bad. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I, we're going to find out what that was about. It's going to be important. It'll be one of those like, oh, you so. forgot about this thing where he was flying away and did the thing. I don't even know where they were flying to. Maybe they were. he was helping the other dragon or something when he got injured. I don't know. But that gets us to, real quick, before we have to switch to the game, predictions. Um, and before I'll, I'm going to give a, a two-minute little prediction, and you're going to give a two-minute prediction, and we're going to switch. Um, well, actually, I won't even take two minutes. And I'll say this. Uh, I got it totally wrong. Uh, I was on board with the, the um, 
Night King is going to bypass everything. He's going to keep. He's going to just keep uh, Winterfell busy enough to think that they're like you know kind of doing okay. As he flies down and does something else in um, King's Landing, maybe destroys the Citadel or something to that effect. Um, uh, I th- I would have thought that he would have known that like books are down there, or maybe books about how to defeat him or something else. So that was like an important thing. I was I totally rode that wave um, to to Wrongville. So I'll 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 eat that crow as it were. Um, but uh, I don't know what to expect honestly. All I know is I I will pray to the old and new gods. I will sacrifice whatever I need to. Um, that that just Cersei dies a horrible death and also um, whatever that uh, the dude, the the Ironborn I can't remember, uh, not Theon th- 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 Thyroid Thyroid or whatever <laughs> no, the, um, the, the other guy the guy who is oh yeah, the yeah, uncle yeah, uh, I, 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 he needs to die a horrible death, so but maybe he put a prince in her belly well, that Prince ain't long for life. But then you know what? The interesting thing is about this She's show. Not pregnant, it doesn't matter. She may, she may be the only sole survivor. You know, <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, go ahead, go ahead, Jonathan. What do you got? Because we do it. We <laughs> got it. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be getting the game ready as, as you give your last okay. prediction, so I can switch over quick. All right. Well, so some people are going to die. Some people are not. That's the easy <laughs> prediction. <right>? Wow. <laughs> no, so I'm, I'm going to go big here. Um. In the previous episode, at, at, when it ended, um, Pod was singing a song, and the song actually goes back to part history, where mm-hmm. it tells the story of a Targaryen who gave up his right to the throne for the lady he loved, and there's a lot of parallels, and perhaps foreshadowing, with Jon Snow giving up the throne so that Daenerys, the lady he loves, can rule. I actually think the fact that you saw the Unsullied and the Dothraki basically bite the dust. And you've seen a lot of other stuff laid down for how Daenerys can't rule. I think she dies. I think Jon Snow dies because he was brought back by the Lord of Light. And I think he's going to be kaput as soon as his mission's done. I actually think you're going to see a battle of wits and will basically between Cersei. And you're also going to see it between one of the Stark girls. And I think one of the Stark girls will die. Maybe not who you would expect. Uh, and I would also suggest that... We might get Clegane Bowl happening on the Hound and Zombie Mountain at some point. And I think that prophecy might come true about one of the little brothers killing Cersei. That's what I got. I like it. I really like it. I agree. And that music could only mean it's time for one thing, ladies and gentlemen. It is time for game time with the Mythwits. I'm your host, Michael Kafis, and on this episode, we're playing Name That Place of Thrones. I will give you the name of either a city mentioned in the Bible that I'm pretty sure was from the Old Testament, or a location mentioned on a Game of Thrones episode and or in the books. Jonathan, you will be playing with yourself tonight, so tell me how many times you think you can beat yourself with yourself. You, uh, you alright there, bud? Uh, I'm good. Okay. So, yeah. so, um, we'll say once. You... <laughs> no. Yeah. What, what, what I'm telling you is, uh, you have eight questions. I know what you're telling me. You, you, you are, you I'm think you're only gonna... Time. You're only going to get 13%? You're only, you think you can only do 13%? Yeah. Wow. That way people are never disappointed. You will... I promise it over deliver. You, <laughs> you, no, no. I, you That's cannot do this. You have, you have to choose at least four, 50, four or better 50%. Come on. Come on. Four. Four it is. All right, I will give you. I will let you at least go for a better fifty percent. But if you don't get for, you may not even get the music if you can't pull that off. Come on, Jonathan. <laughs> I don't even know if I have the music. Oh, you may As not you get know. it anyway. I just realized I don't. I may have the music. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, um. Oh well, then we can't play. Forget that. Let <laughs> Francis. Style. No. All right. Uh, all right. Here we go. Uh, the get first place. The first place that you have to decide is it. Uh, in from Game of Thrones or from the Bible, is 
Sardis. Sardis. Did you use it in a sentence? Yes. I went to Sardis and had a whore. Uh, okay, I'm going to say... Oh, no, 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 no. A horrible time. I went to Sardis and had a horrible time. I, I think Sorry. you did a Freudian slip there for Game of Thrones, but I'm just going to go say Bible. Final answer. All right, you are correct. I don't have the noises. But the thing, very good. See, you're you're you've already beaten yourself once. All right, good job. A lot of practice. Good job. All right, uh, your next your next place, Game of Thrones or New Test New Old Testament is A New Testament. It is a Bible, huh? No, Kish. Kish. The um, kingdom Mr. of Kish. The kingdom of Kish. Let's go Bible, but I think that's wrong. So you're giving me an answer you think is wrong, but you're going to tell me that it's, that that's my it's final right. answer. I think you're full of shit. But Kish is correct. It is from the Bible. Bing, bing. Okay. Number three. Uh, I love the bing bing. <laughs> Can you just do that from now on on the show? Forget the sound effects. When someone no. gets right, you just go bing bing. Oh, I for I'm forgetting to read these. So yeah, Sardis was an ancient capital of the kingdom of uh, Lydia, and Kish was an ancient hill city of uh, Sumer in Mesopotamia. So uh, now, uh, Sathar. Sathar. We're gonna go Game of Thrones. Sathar, so good. Bing, bing, bing. Sathar was the waterfall city of the kingdom of Sarnor. Yeah, I didn't know that either. <laughs> All right. See, now you've got three of them correct. You are three for three so far. Okay. Number four. Ooh. Nicer. Nicer. We're going to go um, Bible on that one. Nicer is a ruined city. In Essos, it was the capital of the Rohirrim before there was they were forced to flee to Dorne by the Valerians. That sounds right. So, you picked if Bible. Only they were nicer about it. All right, that's okay. You are three for four. You're uh, you're doing good. You're doing good. I think you can get at least one one or two more of these. All right. Challenge accepted. Etham, the city of Etham. Bible. Etham was the second place after Sukkoth, at which the Israelites stopped during the Exodus. So I just got to call up the chat room for a sec. Uh huh. So my co host on my show, uh, Adrian Benson, put a comment in saying, I've never seen a single episode, and even I could get 50%, John. And I just think that's really funny and probably true. That's true. All right. Well, put your chip down, Adrian, because here we go. Uh, Kohor. Kohor. We're going to go Game of Thrones. Is one of the nine free cities in western Essos, uh, located between the Narrow Sea and the grasslands held by the Dothraki. Very good. Well... You've succeeded in beating yourself. Let's see how far past, how how far into extra innings can you go? The seventh, the seventh one is Petra, the Bible. city of Petra. ISIS ruined it. ISIS ruined Petra. They did. And as a side note, um, they used the um, what do they call it? The academy, I think it is, as the scene. For the Grail in uh, Indiana Jones. Oh, you, you know what? You're absolutely right. I did make a note of that. Uh, it's the historical and archaeological city in southern Jordan, and that is actually the place that they did. I, I did not. You know, you are a librarian. You are. You got. You got uh, smarts. Smarts in your teeth. So Somewhere in there. Here is your last one. If you if you get if you get this one. You will have gotten an 88%. You have one wrong. That was it so far, okay? You ready? Sure. All right, here we go. Nath. That would be Game of Thrones. Nath is an island in the Summer Sea located off the northwestern coast of the continent of Southoros. Southorios. <laughs> 
And he really gets creative with regions, doesn't he? He does. He likes to keep it simple. So, uh, Jonathan, you did 88%. You are, you know what? You are, you just, you got to have more confidence, buddy. Come on. You did good. You did good. And da 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 da. Pete, that reminds me. I, I have to get, um, that song in here. I don't know why it's not there. So, right? Because it's uh, I'm in the game border. Blame. Nope, it's not. But one in time there. I win a game on your show, and I don't even get the cool music. Yeah. Yeah. You guys ain't, owe me. Ain't that a stinker? All right. <laughs> I am going to run the closer uh, as soon as I scroll up to the right place. So, Jonathan, any last final moments? Any last um, final, final thoughts, as it were? Visit WordGamingRecon.com. We give us lots of money. No. Um, enjoy Game of Thrones. It's really good. And enjoy seeing your favorite people die. Oh. And Mike! You, you just, you just, yes. you just blew my mind, dude, because if Arya dies after all this... Oh. Like that was. I didn't want to say, but I think she's going. She's done. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. Has she? Wait a minute. Thirsty, has friend. she? Has she ever been raised by the dead or been raised from death before? I can't remember. She was we near death. She was. We near also death. don't know if it's really her. Oh come on! That was just that was that was wrong. Because <laughs> you got jacking right. Maybe she died. And hey, we don't know. It's that's been Jack the, the whole the whole time. All right, all right, that's it, that's it. I yeah, am no. uh, I'm running, running the closer, my friend. Uh, running the closer. Here we go now. If this mouse would work, here it. You go. just gotta keep clicking it. <laughs> On that note, you've just enjoyed another awesome episode of the Myth With. You got me, Jonathan. <laughs> If you don't have time for videos, make sure to subscribe to our podcast via your favorite podcatcher. Do the like, follow, subscribe thing wherever it's appropriate. And make sure to share your favorite episodes on social media to help spread Mythwit's love all over the entire planet. Uh, and all over Esteros and Easteros, Southeros, Northeros, all the roses. Um, tweet us at Mythwits and uh, check out Mythwits.com. Mythwits is produced by Aetherforge Creations and is part of the TSR Podcast Network. Check out TSRPN.com and Aetherforge.com for more cool stuff. Mythwits is a Creative Commons product. Like and share it in all the places. Just don't edit it and don't stab it in the chest with Valerian Steel. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Tell your friends to tune in, and we'll see you all next Monday. Jonathan? Do, 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 do. <laughs> Winner! And stay tuned for the Movie Draft Minute coming up next. As soon as I.